Hello and thank you for joining me. Today we are going to talk about how to access Azure service for your SQL servers outside of Azure data centers using SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc. Many of our customers have their mission critical data running in SQL Server and Azure data services. So I'm excited to have Dinanjay today here with me. Uh, Dinanjay is a principal program manager for SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc, SQL Hybrid. How are you doing, Dinanjay? I'm doing great, Thomas. Uh, many of our customers are running SQL Server in their data centers for decades, running mission critical workloads. I'm excited here to talk to you, Thomas, about all the great capabilities we have enabled with SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc. Now, I know you have some awesome stuff prepared and awesome stuff to share with us today. So um, today we're going to talk about all the new enhancements for SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc. Uh, there have been many new capabilities that have been released uh, for this scenario. Um, but for people who haven't really used that before, uh, can you share a little bit what SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc is? Absolutely. Uh, as you said, at Ignite, we are releasing quite a few capabilities on SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc. But let's first talk about what we are hearing from customers. Customers that we talk of, of, that we are talking to who are using SQL Server today, whether they are using it in physical, virtual, on Windows or Linux, ninety percent of those customers enterprise customers are going to have a hybrid strategy, which means they'll be using public cloud as well as they'll be having services running in their own data centers or outside of public cloud. At the same time, 93% of them have a multi-cloud strategy for various reasons. You know, Each one of them may have a preference of a, uh, a specific cloud. And what, is, what are the challenges that they see? Customers understand that going to the cloud is important, but they can't quickly switch over their cloud apps, apps and data to the cloud at, at the click of a button. Now they have a very complex environment which they have to manage, patching, backup, you know, integrate with their CI CD pipelines, and it's very time consuming. And these database, uh, databases are, many of them are mission critical, so you can't have downtime. Uh, now that they have disparate a, you know, clouds in which they're running their SQL databases, some running in Azure Cloud, some in running in third-party clouds, some in their on-premises, governance and visibility across all of these resources is very, very important for them. And, and now having to do this with various companies that they have acquired, various business teams having different needs, becomes a challenge for the DBA. Uh, database versioning is important. They want to make sure that they're on the latest version. And the traditional models of licensing and pricing are becoming obsolete and customers are moving towards a lot of the cloud-based models. SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc helps these customers get that consistent set of services in Azure even before they have moved their services, their databases into Azure. And they can start governing and start ready going down the migration journey. So we are bringing that data manageability that our customers are benefiting in Azure to their SQL servers on-premise and also in multi-cloud environments. So there are three main capabilities that customers mainly care about. One is management. Number two is governance, and third one is security for their uh, workloads. So those are the capabilities that we are bringing with uh, SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc. No, this is this is fantastic because this is something I see a lot, right? With working with customers, uh, manage, managing these complex environments through through hybrid cloud, edge, and multi cloud environments, it's not an easy uh, thing to do. So. Um, you mentioned these three um, scenarios and things we are doing there. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the benefits using SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc? Absolutely. So uh, first comes, like I said, with SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc is the cloud manageability. 
to manage, govern, and secure your SQL servers, whether they are running in Azure or running outside of Azure from the Azure control plane. That gives our customers a single view of the various SQL servers that are, they're running, but connected into Azure. Uh, the eventual aspiration for many of these customers is that they want to manage with a single control plane, have the inventory, do the tag management, and start using resource graph to increase their visibility into the data estate. Because Azure Arc is collecting important information about these databases that they're running, the version, the updates, the configuration for these uh, services, and also whether these services are running with best practices in mind so that they can be automatically evaluated wherever they are running. Um, and you can receive that report. Next comes governance. It's important for many businesses to have consistent policies to govern their data. Now, using SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc, you can connect your SQL Server instances to Azure and start using governance services like Purview. Uh, Microsoft Purview allows our customers to have that central governance site for all the access policies for authorization, authentication, without having to create complex scripts for logins, permissions, which are very error prone and can break. And then many of our customers who are using Azure SQL and Azure SQL Managed Instance benefit from Microsoft Defender. Microsoft's cloud security solution now can be used for your on-premise data assets running in SQL. Microsoft Defender for Azure SQL includes functions that can be used to discover and mitigate potential database vulnerabilities. So now you're very confident that you have the best practices, you're protecting your data assets using Defender, and you're also using capabilities like Active Directory, single sign-on solutions. All of this gets enabled through SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc for you. Oh, this is fantastic and very exciting uh, stuff there. Um, so obviously we spoke about in the, in the, in the past about uh, different data services and so on. And this is now for SQL Server. So by connecting all these servers to Azure, these SQL servers, can I now manage all my SQL servers directly from Azure or how does that work? Uh, that's the beauty of uh, Azure Arc is that once SQL servers that are running in your on-premises, get connected to Azure. Azure Arc is pushing all the metadata about those SQL servers into Azure. So you can use the Azure control plane, you can use Azure uh, tools, you can use the Azure portal to do an inventory of all your SQL server assets. You can do tag management using resource graph that gives you an ability to increase your visibility of the entire data estate. You can also do license management. I know this is very key for many of our enterprise customers which have thousands of licenses. They want to know how those licenses are actually being utilized by the different business groups, by their different teams, and compare what their procurement state is against what their existing license management state is. But before I go any further, let's go into a demo that showcases how this works. Now, as we showed, you can manage all your SQL servers at scale from a single point of control. And I'm happy to show you how SQL Server on Arc-enabled servers enables you to manage all these SQL servers from that single point of control from the Azure portal. So as you go ahead, you can connect these SQL servers that are running on Arc-enabled servers, and you get a single place to view all your SQL servers. As you'll notice in the Azure portal, I have SQL Server, Azure Arc resources up and running. Now, when I click on the databases tab here under data management section, you will see that all the databases associated here show up. From here, you can search for those databases of your choice. You can even have hundreds of databases. So this makes it easy for you to get information about those databases. Now you can click on the database and get into further drill down details and discover properties of that database. 
which will be useful for reporting and inventory purposes. As you see here, we have properties section that shows you properties of the databases that you would normally see in SSMS or SQL Server Management Studio. We can see that the database here is read-only. It has auto sharing properties. Uh, you can see the recovery mode. You can see auto close. Is it remote data archived? Now, continuing on, we can use the Azure Resource Graph Explorer in the Azure portal, which can leverage all these properties that we have collected and give us rich and powerful insights about SQL servers by building some excellent queries. So now let's look at a few queries uh, to go through as a sample uh, where you're interested in. So the first query I'm going to run here is where I want 10 databases and return the properties uh, which are available. Uh, so when I write this query and then I hit to run the query using the Run Query button, Azure Resource Graph quickly runs this query against the entire inventory uh, of the SQL databases collected. And now I can view those databases and see all the different properties uh, in the inventory. Now let's move on to, to look at another query that we have created. Now the second query, I want to get all the databases which are not encrypted so we can go and encrypt those databases. Okay, so I'm going to run the query, and in the Azure Resource Graph Explorer, I can now see all the databases that are not encry encrypted in an easy-to-inspect list. We can continue and, and see more details about this. Uh, we can look at the SQL Server version distribution. So let's run another query, which can give me the SQL Server versions, so I can make sure that all my databases are up to date. When I run the query, I'll get the different SQL Server versions here. And uh, the powerful thing about Azure Resource Graph Explorer is we can also leverage charts. So now I'm seeing the distribution of version in, in a chart format. And again, uh, this is great for reporting purposes and inventory purposes. And if I want to see it as a bar chart, I can quickly select, uh, uh, change the selector and look at it in a bar chart. And you'll notice that with each bar, I get for each version, what is the total count of number of resources that I can see. Now, look at one more example in terms of a query uh, for the databases properties. Now, I want to get all the databases that are in West US 3, and I want to see the properties of those databases. So when I run this query, I can get all the databases which are in the region West US 3. And I can drill down into uh, the details of those databases. So here's a quick way how Azure Resource Graph Explorer can really use all that database inventory properties that have been collected, and you can run rich queries to gain insights. Thank you, Dananjay. That was an amazing demo. Um, so um, as I understand, now by using Azure, I can actually go and analyze the infrastructure and the SQL Server for best practices, right? Because obviously, I guess a lot of DBAs also know the best practices, but if you manage a lot of different SQL servers, for example, Sometimes people do changes to the systems and it's very hard to find out, are they all configured in the right way with the best practices in mind? Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So I have a customer who has acquired a lot of companies which are using SQL. They are themselves using SQL. Uh, they run uh, gaming sites all over the internet and they want to get a good understanding as a central IT Am I using best practices across all of these different data assets that they have? That's where ARC is really coming to the rescue. Uh, now that we have collected all this rich information, as you saw, Thomas, we can help the customers analyze what configuration they have across their entire SQL real estate. In addition to that, we run SQL in Azure, so we 
use our own rules uh, engine to understand how to best configure your SQL servers. So what we are going to do is whenever you have connected all your SQL servers to Azure, we can run, you can run best practices assessment on demand or periodically to evaluate the configuration of your SQL servers wherever they're running, whether they're running in Azure data center or whether they're running in your own data center. After you enable this best practices assessment, uh, it scans on a periodic basis each of your SQL Server instances and databases and provides recommendations, actionable guidance like the configuration you should be using, index management, uh, flag you about features that have been deprecated, uh, uh, give you rec recommendations on missing trace flags, statistics, and even more. It helps you scan at periodic intervals for the most up-to-date results and empowers your DBAs to proactively uh, address any kind of risks and increases operational stability while reducing your workloads on the DBAs to manage this disparate uh, real estate. Uh, now let's look into how best practices assessment through an actual demo. And in this demo, we'll see how best practices assessment gives you as the DBA uh, all kinds of guidance because we want you to run SQL the best wherever you're running and get the most out of it. So uh, let's go on to a demo where we can see how best practices assessment can give you actionable guidance across your entire SQL real estate. Now let's take a look at SQL Server best practices assessment that can be enabled using SQL Server on Arc enabled servers. At a high level, best practices assessment is providing you with the tools to evaluate the configuration of your SQL Server. So once you have enabled your SQL Server to be Arc enabled and connected to Azure, the assessment lets you scan the entire SQL Server instances, the database in it, and provides you recommendations for things like SQL Server, the database configuration, index management, deprecated features that may have been enabled, and many, many more. Now let's take a look at how BPA works in the Azure portal. In order to enable this, what you'll have to do is go to the Azure portal, to your SQL Server that is ARC enabled. Once you do that, you can press the Best Practices Assessment tab under Settings, and you'll notice that it will pop up all this information for you. And you can actually run an assessment and then the assessment will complete and give you updates. Now, since these assessments take a while to complete, I'm going to show you an actually completed assessment and we'll drill down into it, look at the best practices. And um, once you click into this, what you will see is the best practices results that have come from the last run. Uh, you can see that 93.9% uh, of my SQL Server tests have passed, that is 369, but I do have some medium and low priority issues right now um, that I need to take care of. So let's drill down into you know the 10 medium and 8 low priority issues that are showing up. And you'll see that you can scroll down and you'll see actually in severity which ones are medium which ones are low, they are, they are appropriately sorted out. There are tags relating to those, those issues, so you know what those issues are about. When you click on one of those tags, you'll see all the databases that are impacted uh, or that are detected for that, uh, that issue. And you can see that there are four databases with that medium severity uh, issue that I just clicked on. And when I click on the details, I actually see a description which is helpful from the perspective of solving the problem because there's a helpful link that can quickly go and help me assess what the issue is about, the description of the issue, and potentially fixing that issue and mitigating that issue. Um, now I can also see the new issues that have popped up with the latest run of best practices assessment. I can see that I have one medium and one low. 
when I click on the low issue, I can get links relating to resolving that issue and once the issue is resolved, you'll see that the issue will also be uh, listed as a resolved issue over here. So the goal of best practices assessment to give you the insights about your entire SQL estate wherever it runs and make sure that your SQL servers are healthy, configured the best. As a DBA, this is an extremely useful tool for you because it saves you time and, and resources to make sure that all your SQL servers, hundreds and thousands of them, are configured with best practices. Um, and so I highly encourage you, after you've ARC enabled your SQL servers, to go turn on best practices assessment and periodically have it run so you'll understand how your SQL servers are configured. Thank you, Dinanjay. Again, great demo, and it really helps, obviously, to apply these best practices to the SQL Server uh, environment, and also find, obviously, not just about like just misconfiguration, but also in terms of security. Um, and speaking about security, security is obviously super important for our customers, especially data security is even more critical uh, uh, for them. So how can they use Azure to make sure they can um, make their SQL servers even more secure? Yes, uh, SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc uh, takes security very, very critically for many of our customers who are in various lines of business, verticals, uh, they, they are in different regions around the world where security is very important. Customer PII data is very important. Making sure that their data assets are secure is so critical because not having any kind of breach can, can potentially impact uh, not just their databases, but the overall business. And uh, Azure Arc can be used to enable Microsoft Defender on your SQL databases, wherever they're running, on your SQL servers. What Microsoft Defender does, once you've connected using Azure Arc, is it continuously assesses, secures, and hardens your hybrid infrastructure, as well as your SQL servers that are running uh, in any cloud, whether they're running in Azure Cloud, in your data center, or third-party clouds, and make sure it guards against vulnerabilities and threats. So let's take a look at Microsoft Defender for Cloud in SQL Server enabled by Arc Azure Arc. At a high level, Microsoft Defender for Cloud actually scans and checks for any security threats in the Azure Security Center and gives you information on recommendations on fixing those specific threats. So if you go to the security section in the Azure portal and you click on Microsoft Defender for Cloud, then you see this report of security vulnerabilities and recommendations that it has detected. You'll notice that I have five recommendations for areas where there is potentially a security threat. There are descriptions for each of those five threats, and you can also see that is a severity level for each of those threats. Now, as an example, I have one low two high and two medium severity recommendations. So the one that is high, machine should be configured to periodically check for missing system updates. Let's double click on it to find out more information about the potential solutions to mitigate that threat. Now, if I go inside and look at the details of that threat, what you'll notice is it shows me that the severity is high, and it also gives me recommendations on how I can actually mitigate this. It will tell me that five out of my seven resources are affected, and I can also click down and understand which resources are actually in an unhealthy state, which of those two resources are in a healthy state, and now if I want to further double click and go down, what you'll notice is that it helps me get a quick fix, and also give me recommendations to manually fix it if I don't want it fully automated and quick. Now, this is just one of one such example. Let's look at another uh, example of a potential threat that has been identified. Uh, now, you look at this, this one. Vulnerabilities and security configuration on your Windows machine should be fixed. Now, 
great if i click on that what you see again is a description of the related recommendations on how we can actually mitigate this issue so you can see that 293 resources of 298 have been impacted if i go ahead and click it will show me how i can potentially do a quick fix or a manual fix so the at a high level the goal for microsoft defender is to make sure all our resources are secure and in a healthy state that there are no security threats for the data state if it does detect one it gives us specific recommendations so you no longer have to worry about having the security team constantly worried that your SQL servers, your databases, and the data inside of it is potentially unprotected. We are automating this process for you, and the security team can quickly come in, help mitigate, and close on issues at the earliest possible, reducing your security uh, attack surface and making your SQL servers more secure. So deploying Defender for SQL and Defender for servers at scale is simplified using Azure Arc so that your entire state of infrastructure and SQL servers can be protected. It helps remediate potential vulnerabilities with simple point-click fixtures or using scripting or even using policies. So as new SQL servers are introduced into your, uh, into your data state, they are constantly protected by, uh, by a Microsoft Defender. It gives detailed guidance and threat intelligence through integration, even with uh, Sentinel and external themes uh, that you may be using. Another great feature uh, to keep your SQL servers always up to date is automated patching. So we talked about Defender, uh, but we also want to make sure that your databases are up to date with the latest and greatest patches. And that's where SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc makes it super simple for you to update and patch all your SQL servers. In the Azure portal, you can go configure automated patching for all your SQL servers that are enabled by Azure Arc. It works at a host operating system level and applies patches, the critical fixes, to all installed SQL Server instances. You can also, now, now it's important to know, Thomas, that we just don't willy-nilly apply patches with Azure Arc and bring down your SQL servers. You can actually configure maintenance windows, thus ensuring your system updates and restarts occur only during those maintenance windows when your databases can potentially be offline. So please note that this feature works only on Windows. It's integrated with SQL Server on Windows and applies the most important and critical uh, patches for you. So we are going to extend this capability even further uh, uh, to do cluster-aware patching. So if you have SQL Server in a clustered environment, all the replicas of the cluster will get patched with zero downtime. Um, so look for some really good capabilities with automated patching and using Microsoft Defender for SQL Server uh, with Arc-enabled SQL Server. Oh, this is fantastic. Uh, again, also, especially the cluster awareness, since most of, like a lot of data is obviously running on these critical uh, infrastructure and in these clusters, it's good to have cluster aware updating there. And speaking of updating, uh, I obviously talk to a lot of customers and we still have sometimes SQL Server 2012, right, in place. And for that, we need extended security updates. So uh, can I use Azure Arc to uh, enable that in a specific way? Yes, it's. Uh, I know that many customers have trusted SQL for many, many, many years, over a decade, and they're still running SQL Server 2012, uh, which, which ended uh, life in terms of support. Uh, and so now these customers are like, hey, we are not ready yet to upgrade, but can Azure Arc help us? And no problem at all. You can use extended security updates enabled by Azure Arc as a monthly subscription. So once critical updates are available, and if you have enrolled your SQL servers for 
and we will detect and give you a report of which ones are using uh, are, are 2012 and ready for uh, extended security updates or ESUs. And you can go into the portal and use a monthly subscription to enable these for uh, SQL servers for ESUs. Once critical updates are available, Azure Arc will automatically distribute to Arc-enabled SQL Server instances that you have enabled. Now, the beauty of this is that if you migrate that SQL Server to Azure, you don't have to pay anymore. The payment stops automatically because Arc is keeping track that that SQL Server instance has migrated to Azure. So, advantages, you can still do ESUs without doing Arc, but the advantages of doing it through Arc is one, it's super simple. Number two, you can get repeated updates and patches that are automatically applied. Number three is when you migrate to Azure, your bill is prorated, so you're not paying anymore. And, and, and last but not the least, you don't need to resubscribe for year three. Uh, but there's lots of caveats in this, and you should uh, check our online site with an FAQ for how to use ESUs. Uh, but that's been a great feature that many of our customers are using uh, SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc for. Yeah, so I think with Azure Arc, I think it's the easiest way we ever had to deploy extended security uh, updates. So it's absolutely a great way. So switching gears a little bit and talk about business critical workloads. So for business critical workloads, many customers have SQL Server configured in availability groups and failover cluster instances. Can you share a little bit more on that? Yes, Thomas. For many of these business critical workloads, it is important to make sure that Azure Arc uh, is available for these customers. And now, as you know, always on failover clustering has been in uh, HA technology that many of our customers have been using. It leverages Windows Server failover clustering to provide that redundancy so that when SQL is running, uh, there are multiple nodes running SQL with replicas and it failure, it's resilient to failure, uh, failovers. Many of our mission critical customer workloads are running on these failover cluster instances of what we call as FCI in their data centers. And we want to make sure that the reliability, the availability, the performance on these failover clusters is high. It's a proven technology and customers have been using it. So SQL Server on Arc-enabled servers until recently was not supporting these FCI instances and we would block deploying uh, Arc-enabled SQL Server extension on it. But now with the latest release, you can start using uh, SQL Server on Arc-enabled servers, even for these failover cluster instances. And now these instances will show up, the inventory of all these FCI clusters will show up in the Azure portal. Each of these uh, SQL servers that are projected in Azure can now give you the configuration of the FCI, the inventory of the FCI, and we are going to make more and more enhancements so that you can get consistent billing and you can also see Defender, best practices assessment, and all the other services that you're using with your other SQL Server instances to work with FCI. So it's a, an important technology for many of our business critical workloads uh, that our customers run, and we are making sure with the latest release, so go try it out. Absolutely, I'm sure customers are gonna love this. And um, so, we also talked a little bit about mission critical uh, data and workloads. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about how Arc can help with these mission critical data workloads? Yeah, another aspect, Thomas, for this mission critical data is data governance. Data governance is one of the pillars that Azure Arc is helping our customers uh, enable through purview integration. So Microsoft Purview, as you know, is a service for data governance. Uh, when you connect your SQL servers to Azure, uh, what it allows Purview to do is use your SQL server instances, databases as a source for doing analysis and governance um, and set self-service policies for those SQL server instances that have been enabled through Azure Arc. So these SQL servers that are enabled through Azure Arc 
act as a source for purview. Purview then scans the databases, the schemas, the tables, the views, and allows you to set data governance policies so you can control who is accessing your data and making sure that uh, that your mission critical data is is uh, protected from incorrect access and and has the right governance and policies on board. This is just the beginning, Thomas. We have more and more capabilities coming in purview. And now that you've connected uh, your Azure, uh, your uh, SQL Server instances to Azure, all those capabilities will be available for you, especially if you're a software assurance customer through many of these integrations that I just talked about. Oh, this is fantastic. I love what we are doing there. Um, and you just spoke about, okay, uh, I, I like what we did, right? So I want to use um, SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc. Um, and my, in my environment, I already have um, enabled many of my servers uh, to basically be Azure Arc enabled servers. So, but they're also running now SQL Server on top of it. So I know that you have been working on um, a, a way to actually go and um, get the SQL Server enabled features on these on these servers. Yeah, yeah, and and we have made it real simple for you. In the beginning, uh, it, we, we go on a rapid cycle, as you know, Thomas. We release SQL Server enabled on Azure Arc on a monthly basis. Initially, uh, we had enabled this capability to be in uh, uh, auto, you know, the C Arc SQL Server extension to be enabled through the portal. Then we went to our customers and they said, well, I can't do that. I have thousands of SQL servers running tens of thousands of databases. So we integrated script uh, to do that. Then we in integrated policies. And then we thought, you know what? Every customer that we are talking to wants this enabled by default. And they're like, why do I need to, if, I, if you detect a SQL server running on your ARC-enabled server, why do you want me to take any action? Now we, now we said, oh, that's great. So what happens is once you have, Thomas, you've enabled your server that's running uh, uh, Windows or Linux and drop the agent, the Azure Arc agent, the Azure Arc agent can detect if SQL's running on it. And it pulls down the Arc SQL Server extension by automatically and by default deploys it in your environment. So suddenly you will start seeing SQL servers and, and we have a large number of Windows servers that run SQL as a workload. One of the biggest workloads on Windows Server is SQL. Now with no changes at all, once you have enabled Azure Arc, you can start getting the benefits of uh, the SQL Server capabilities because the ARC enabled SQL Server extension is automatically deployed. Now, some customers do want some level of control and they said, we don't want this auto enablement. No problem at all. We have a simple way for you to tag resource groups or servers in such a way that you can, we will leave those servers from being auto enabled. And then you have full control on which servers get enabled for SQL Server enabled with Azure Arc, and which ones get enabled later. And I have a, I'm working with a large customer to roll things out region by region. So we give you that full control, but we have made it super simple for you to use all these capabilities. Oh, this is fantastic! Again, I love that. Like this automatic detection can be there, uh, especially like in many companies, right? Sometimes I don't even know where. Like someone spins up a SQL Server somewhere. And it goes just undetected, and now I can, if I want to, I can see uh, that and automatically onboard this. So this is this sounds fantastic. So there's a ton of awesome stuff you just shared uh, today with me, Dananjay. Um, if I want to learn more about this, where should I go? Yeah, Thomas, uh, there's a lot of features that I even didn't talk about today, uh, or in SQL Server enabled by Azure Arc. And you can go to a https aka.ms forward slash arc sequel. And you'll find a ton of information about what I talked about. Also, some of the new capabilities that are coming 
that will help you with monitoring, telemetry, intelligence about your SQL servers, purview, defender support, and additional capabilities we are helping you in the migration process, in your migration journey as you move your SQL Server to the cloud. So aka.ms, Arc SQL. Awesome, thank you very much, Dinanjay. I will definitely check out the blog and I will definitely check out the documentation. And also, thank you everyone for watching and see you in the next one.